Hello, comrades. So I'm practicing uh, with my students doing problems in multivariable calculus class uh, for finding volumes uh, by using triple integrals in spherical and cylindrical coordinates. So in this video, I want just to show uh, pretty quick how to find the volume of a uh, uh, cone which is bounded by the plane uh, by using spherical coordinates. So let's say I'm given the cone which is given by equation z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And let's say uh, this cone is bounded by the plane, z is equal to 4. And then my region E is going to be above my cone and below um, my plane. So what do you want to do? I want to find uh, the area, or well, actually if z is equal to 4, then my angle is not going to be nice. So let's change this to z is equal, let me think. Uh, okay. And actually we can put like any constants, constant, it doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, for the first step, let's sketch and see what does my region uh, E looks like. So let's call this region E. So in this case, I have my Cartesian coordinates x, y, z. And uh, the first equation is the equation of the cone because if I'm going to square both sides, I will get z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So in this case, I will have just this cone, but only the top part since from here follows that z is uh, bigger or equal than zero because of this square root. Okay, then I also have plane z is equal to one. And let's take that this is my plane, z is equal to one. And then we can see that my region E is going to be this cone. And what I want to do, I want to find the, area, uh, the volume of this region E. Okay, uh, so step two, I need to use the triple integral. And according, uh, not step three, step two, and according to the triple integral, I have just the triple integral over region E. And if I want to find the volume by using triple integral, my function must uh, be equal to one dV. So this integral indicates the volume. Then since I want to use spherical coordinates, then here I'm going to change my integral, or in other words, expand dv, uh, into a spherical form. So here I'm going to use spherical coordinates. And when I use spherical coordinates, uh, what variables do you have? I have variables rho, theta, and phi. So in other words, uh, when I'm doing this substitution, what do I do? First of all, I want to describe this region E by using these three, uh, these three variables, rho, theta, and phi. And uh, instead of x, y, and z, uh, I need to plug in the, my spherical coordinate substitution, uh, or in other words, change of variables. But since my function one doesn't matter, but still I want to mention uh, this change of variables. So my x will be equal to rho cos sine phi, a y rho sine phi, but I'm, mi I'm missing something, and the missing part is sine, oh sorry, sine uh, cos sine theta, sine theta, missing part is sine phi, uh, for both variables, and then my z is rho uh, cosine phi. Okay, but since my function is one, I have just one here. So, and then uh, I need to expand my dv in terms of d rho, d theta, and d phi. But before I'm going to do this, let's take a look at our region, and let's describe this region by using uh, spherical coordinates. So, first of all, the most uh, easiest bound in this case, what I can do, I can describe my theta 
uh, and what is theta? Theta measures uh, what is the location my, of my region corresponding to the rotation around the axis. So if you imagine that you have vector in xy plane, then theta measures how far you go from a positive x axis, axis direction. So in this case, I can see to describe the whole region, my theta needs to change from 0 to 2 pi. So theta changes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, what about angle phi? Angle phi is a little bit tricky one. It describes, if you will imagine that you have vector in row, let's say, yeah, vector uh, row in uh, three-dimensional space, then phi measures how far you go from the axis. So in this case, we can see that phi, uh, do you have another color chalk? Let me see. Okay, here's another color chalk. Then I can see that first value of phi is equal to zero. It's when I'm going to along the axis. And then my maximum value of phi is going to be given by uh, the boundary of my cone. Let's call this phi naught and this is phi one. And that's why I change my uh, plane to be equal to one because in this case I will have a really nice angle. And the reason is why on this picture you need to take a look at this triangle. So let me draw this triangle over here. And for this triangle, what do I know? I know that uh, my plane is z is equal to 1. So z is equal to 1, it's my height. But also when z is equal to 1, I have that uh, for this circle, uh, and I will get this circle if I will intersect my plane and my cone, or in other words, when I will set two equations to be equal to each other, I will get that 1 is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. Or in other words, uh, 1 is equal to x squared plus y squared. So in this case, this 1 is going to be my radius. So radius is equal to 1. And what do you want to find? I want to find this angle phi. So then I have the tangent of phi is equal to opposite side uh, to adjacent side. So we'll have 1 over 1. So t and tangent of 1 is equal to what? Is equal to phi is going to be pi over 4. So that's why the bounds of my phi is going to be from 0 to pi over 4. Okay. Oh. Uh, sorry. Sometimes it happens. And the last bound is z, uh, not z, is rho. And rho, uh, here's a small trick. Uh, what is rho in this picture? Rho, you can imagine that you're shooting arrows, uh, not arrows, like rays away from the origin and you want to describe all rays that, con uh, that are contained in, your, in our region E. And for this rays you want to know uh, for which given or fixed angle theta, uh, theta and phi what is going to be my rho mean and rho max? And here we can see my region contains the origin. So that's why rho mean, as you uh, can guess, is going to be zero. But what about rho max? A lot of people saying, according to this, that rho max is going to be equal to one or is going to be equal to some other value. So is going to be constant, but this is incorrect. Because if it's equal to one, I'm going to draw this region over here. Then for angle phi is equal to zero, it will be one. But for the angle uh, phi is equal to pi over four, it's also going to be one, a negative, uh, and uh, uh, pi over four, and then theta is equal to pi, uh, three pi over two. So what I'm going to the words I'm going to have, I'm going to have uh, this uh, ice cream cone. But my original region is cone which is bounded by this plane, z is equal to 1. And the reason is, is we can see when phi is equal to 0, I have uh, rho changes from 0 to 1. But when phi is equal 
to uh, pi over 4, then my row changes from 0 to square root of 2. So for different angles phi, I have different row. In other words, my row will be bounded above by the function which depends on phi. And how to do this? When I'm shooting this uh, rays, or like arrows, you can see that they intersect my plane, z is equal to 1. And that's why I mentioned this uh, change of variables, uh, of formulas. Uh, and you can see this equation is given in, uh, in Cartesian coordinates, but I'll, I want to rewrite z is equal to 1 in spherical coordinates. So in this case, I need to replace my z with uh, rho cosine phi, and then rho cosine phi is equal to 1. And from here, I can see that I can solve rho for, uh, in terms of theta. And then we'll get that rho is bounded by 1 divided cosine, sorry, in terms of phi, 1 divided by cosine phi. Okay, and I'm done. So finally, I want to stop this integral, and I will get um, uh, the order. I first want to mention rho and then uh, phi. So I will have d rho, d phi, d theta. And the reason is why, because uh, the upper bound of rho is terms of phi, and phi I have constant numbers, so I want to uh, phi goes after my row. And I will get my bounds from 0 to 2 pi. Oh, here I did one really important mistake, really important mistake. Never forget about Jacobian. And Jacobian here is rho squared sine uh, phi. So I'll have from 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to pi over 4, and uh, from 0 to 1 over cosine phi. So I'm done with my integral setup. So this is going to be my integral. So let's compute this integral. Okay, so I will try to compute this integral pretty fast, so if you will do some mistake, please let me know, so sorry about any, any mistakes. But I will try my, do my best uh, without, uh, do this integral without any mistakes. So I have from 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to pi over 4, uh, from 0 to 1 over cosine phi, rho squared, uh, sine phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. So what do I do in order of this computation? I can see that this integral doesn't depend on theta. That's why I can forget about uh, uh, the last triple integral, uh, the last, uh, about the last bounds. Not to forget, I'm going to evaluate them right away. So it's going to be just two pi. Then I'm going to integrate uh, my function corresponding to rho. So I will get the integral from zero to pi over four. Then I will have uh, sine phi. Uh, rho cube divided by 3 and rho goes from 0 to 1 my, uh, over cosine phi uh, d phi so after I'm going to evaluate this what I will have I will have 2 pi over 3 times uh, here I have a really small space so should I try okay let's try do this I will get integral from 0 to pi over 4 so 1 over cosine cubed phi, so I'll have sine phi uh, over cosine cubed phi d phi. Okay, perfect. Uh, so in this case, what is my next step? Um, I want to in, uh, find this integral by doing u sub. And I'm applying u sub, I'm saying my u is cosine phi. Then my du is equal to negative sine phi d phi. So then I am going to write my integral in the following form and just give me a second, let me check my mistakes because I do a lot of mistakes. So rho cube over 3, so I feel like so far no mistakes. Uh, so what I have over here, I have 2 pi over 3. 
uh, integral. So uh, on the bottom we'll have u cube minus 1 and minus because sine phi d phi is negative du and this is my du. But I need to change my bound because this bounds in terms of phi and I need to have the bounds in terms of u. But cosine of 0, so u of 0 will be just cosine of 0 is equal to 1 and u of pi over 4 is um, cosine of uh, pi over 4 and cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, yes? So I will have just square root of 2 over 2. Okay, and in this case, then I will, what I will have? I will get, have integral from uh, 1 to square root of 2 over 2. So from here I will get uh, negative 2 pi over 3. So here I will have uh, u negative 2 divided by negative 2 because I'm taking the integral by using power rule. And my integral changes, uh, my bounds uh, change from 1 to, let's use 1 over square root of 2 to simplify it a little bit. And then I will have minus and minus will uh, make uh, plus, 2 and 2 will cancel, so I will have pi over 2. And since I cancel this 2, I will have 1 over u squared. And it changes from 1 to 1 over square root of 2. And finally what I will have, I will have pi over 3. Uh, 1 over square root of 2 will be uh, 1 over 1 half, so it will be just 2. Yes, minus 1. So it equals to pi over 3. Okay, I got positive answer, this is really important, and also I got a real nice answer, so I hope this is the correct answer. Okay, comrades, uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions. And I will just uh, do more videos, I guess, because I haven't done any videos in a while. So thank you for watching.